Okay, I believe it's a great time as any to start. Thank you very much for uh, logging on, all uh, individuals who uh, made it today. Uh, fantastic to see everyone uh, here today. In this uh, webinar, by the way, a series of summer educational webinars, uh, we've covered uh, what we covered last year, cancer funding opportunities. Uh, prior to that, uh, we discussed biodefense and infectious diseases funding opportunities. Uh, both, you are welcome to go online to our website, as I just mentioned, freemind, freemindconsultants.com and um, check those out. Or you can go to our YouTube channel, uh, Freemind Group LLC. You could also watch those videos. Today, uh, we will discuss CNS-related uh, uh, or PNS-related non-dilutive sources of funding. Of course, we will primarily uh, focus on NIH, uh, National Institutes of Health. Uh, after all, there are several institutes that could cover uh, said uh, areas of interest, and I'll show you how exactly that would be done. I'll also cover some, uh, a couple of nonprofit organizations. The most logical one of them for the Parkinson's uh, would be Michael J. Fox Foundation, uh, as an example. My name uh, is um, Eyal Ronen. I'm the uh, Vice President of uh, Freemind. Uh, did start in the grant writing too many years back, and uh, since then have uh, moved over to the uh, front end and happy to present to you today um, in this uh, webinar on CNS-related opportunities. Before I, I do dive deep into the, uh, uh, the intricacy of, uh, our, of the human brain, uh, I do want to, uh, to share with you who we are, what we do very briefly. Uh, essentially, we're a consulting firm. What we aim to do is help our clients obtain as much money as possible from non-dilutive sources. We primarily focus on National Institutes of Health, NIH, Department of Defense, DOD, other uh, uh, government organizations could be BARDA from HHS, NSF, for example, and nonprofit organizations uh, as well. We do this across the life sciences. Uh, could be with academics, universities, medical centers, uh, centers, research institutes, and industry. Small startups, all the way to members of large pharmaceutical companies. Um, been doing this for 14 years now. 35 full-time employees on staff, and we submit about 250 applications every single year. What we uh, really see ourselves, uh, or see ourselves is as a tool uh, able to maximize your funding potential. Uh, we start uh, from the strategy point of view, identifying the most relevant funding opportunities. We help you strategize uh, regarding the application, how to increase its chances for award, and I will go into further detail uh, later on in the presentation, or actually at the end of the presentation, I'll describe how exactly we go about doing so, and, and you're welcome to try it on your own. Um, we help manage complex project production processes, and uh, the, the uh, application process, the writing process, is a joint effort. In the case of contracts, we could definitely help you with uh, the negotiation aspect of it. Now, just to give you some perspective, uh, NIH, whoops, NIH budget, uh, $30.9 billion, not 35. I uh, had a little glitch there. Um, basically, if you're looking at this pie, um, taking out intramural research and research management, most of the uh, $30.9 billion are, is money that goes outside the uh, NIH and supports uh, said uh, uh, research. Uh, primarily research project grants, about $16.5 billion, uh, also of interest to you R&D contracts, etc. In terms of the sources of funding that we'll discuss today, uh, primarily NINDS, uh, Neurological Disorders and Stroke, the National Institute of uh, looking at about a $1.5 billion uh, budget, covers Alzheimer's disease, ADHD, ALS, muscular dystrophy, chronic pain, spinal cord injury, stroke, TBI, etc., etc. Uh, in terms of uh, other sources of funding that are also relevant to our audience today, it could be National Institutes of Mental Health, uh, an additional $1.5 billion uh, covering depression as well, bipolar uh, disease, schizophrenia, eating disorders, disorders autism, um, Alzheimer's, uh, as well, uh, sorry, excuse me, that was the National Institute of uh, uh, Aging, uh, PTSD. Uh, in terms of uh, National Institute on Aging, uh, another billion dollars there, Alzheimer's, uh, dementia, and uh, also addiction, about half, half a billion dollars. Total four and a half billion dollar pocket of money, and that's actually not all. These are just the, the usual suspects and probably the most relevant place uh, to uh, begin looking. Um, and I will show you other, uh, other sources as well. In terms of the, uh, the money, where is the money going? Uh, this is taken from the NIH reporter. I, I try to leave here the relevant areas of interest to our audience today. 
just looking at neurosciences, uh, it's a very impressive five and a half billion. Obviously, exceeds the four and a half that I just uh, shared with you. And of course, these lists are not, uh, it's not mutually exclusive. There's a lot of overlap here. But then again, the idea is to show you what sort of dollar dollars we're getting uh, for, for these activities. Uh, neurodegenerative, uh, about $1.7 billion. Alzheimer's, uh, a, a nice half billion. So there's a lot of money going to these pockets of money. And I'm confident that uh, if any of you uh, are relevant to this list, at least, at the very least, uh, you could be targeting these pockets of money. Notice that uh, in terms of uh, actual dollars awarded in 2012, versus estimated 2013 and estimated 2014, we don't see a, a major difference in the dollar value. Taking a closer look at the NINDS mission and areas of interest, well, simply put, the mission of NINDS is to reduce the burden of neurological disease. Now, I will show you some opportunities that uh, outline or, or when they discuss the uh, the scope of the, of the work, they essentially uh, talk about the um, the mission of the NDA, if, if, if what you're proposing is within the mission of the NINDS. So just take a closer look either at the solicitation, if it does outline what sort of areas of interest, although many do not, go on to the NINDS uh, website and try to take a closer look. I just very briefly will go over this. I uh, outlined uh, causes, prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of neurological disorders and stroke. We're looking at grants and contracts. And of course, they also conduct intramural research. In terms of their vision, uh, you could read through this. Uh, it's not terribly interesting but it does outline their long-term goals or their interests and what to fund. Now I will now discuss uh, some uh, funding opportunities. Uh, once again, primarily NIH. I will show you early exploratory proof of concept type awards, typically outlined in R21 uh, mechanisms. I will also show you some more advanced uh, uh, projects that, you, that could cover preclinical and, and phase one as well typically outlined in cooperative agreements, U1s or R01s. Uh, I'll also show you translational uh, approaches, clinical work as well, all the way through phase three clinical trials, efficacy, uh, pivotal phase three clinical trials. Uh, not to be sneered at, there aren't many opportunities to pursue phase three clinical trials uh, within the NIH, so definitely uh, if, if relevant to you, uh, you could take a closer look at these. The first, uh, uh, the first way, uh, um, source of funding that, or, or rather, um, solicitations that I want to discuss would be the omnibus solicitations. The reason is that uh, all of the uh, um, institutes that we just discussed participate in these omnibus solicitations. So in terms of uh, R21, we're looking at exploratory developmental research grant. Um, of course, early <laughs> exploratory type work. No preliminary data is needed, although I always stress that we uh, insist our clients add at least some preliminary data. Um, R01, more substantial body of evidence, um, half a million dollars per year, up to five years. We are seeing quite a few R01s these days, and I will show you some of those today, that don't actually provide a cap for the budget. But then again, if you do read the fine print, and this will take us through uh, to the next slide, if you do read the fine print, uh, it does say that if you do need uh, funds exceeding half a million dollars per year, you best uh, contact the program officer and obtain approval six weeks prior uh, to submission. SBIR, Small Business Innovative Research, definitely a great source of uh, funding, or, or rather a great solicitation to, to try to obtain funding. Uh, all, of these pro, all, all of these institutes that I discussed do, are, uh, do participate in the SBIR program as well as the STTR program. Several limitations you should be aware of, and, I've, and I will go into much greater detail in a future webinar. Uh, most likely in a couple of weeks regarding SBIR uh, programs uh, on the whole. We'll discuss uh, the limitations, the eligibility, and so on, but just as, as a more of a broad overview, uh, when going for an SBIR, you do have to uh, perform at least 67% in-house in the small business concern. Uh, STTR, 40% in-house in the small business concern. So uh, no, no room for virtuality uh, in this virtual world of ours. Why am I showing these solicitations? Um, roughly 80% of awards across the NIH are actually unsolicited. To me, they utilize either these mechanisms or, more, or, or very broad announcements uh, that call for an invest investigator-initiated uh, proposal. So if I show you today, I think I'm up to about 15 different solicitations, and none of them 
are exactly a precise match for what you are looking for, you could always go through the omnibus route, the investigator initiated route, and propose your assigns to a certain granting agency using this omnibus solicitation. Upcoming deadlines, R1, October 5th, R21, 5th, uh, October 16th, SBIR, just missed it two days ago, uh, next one would be December 5th. The first uh, and fantastic award that I want to discuss regarding uh, CNS related opportunities would be the Drug Discovery for Nervous System Disorders. Uh, it's a standard R21, uh, 275,000 over a two year period, no more than 200 per year for direct costs. Uh, the purpose would be to encourage research grant applications uh, directed toward the discovery, notice the discovery and preclinical testing of novel compounds for prevention and treatment of nervous system disorders. So uh, very, very broad language. Essentially, if you do read through the solicitation, they do have specific areas of interest and just read carefully and see if, if what you are, if your field is covered. Um, research projects may include any activities required to identify, optimize, validate potential therapeutic candidates and may propose studies focused on all stages of early drug discovery, pipeline from screening to candidate selection. So definitely very, very broad uh, announcement here. I just uh, went to the next uh, slide, uh, not a whole lot changed. Uh, the reason is this would be the R01 uh, version of this solicitation. Essentially covers the same scope of interest but rather not the same scope of work. To mean that if you are pursuing the R01, you should definitely have preliminary data in place perhaps uh, even uh, a lead uh, or maybe uh, uh, suggest to uh, select the lead through, through the work. Uh, you could theoretically go through phase one clinical trial if, if you're able to. Um, so definitely a fantastic uh, uh, way to start your uh, non-dilutive endeavor using this, um, this drug discovery for nervous system disorders opportunity. Next one will be the NINDS Exploratory Developmental Projects and Translational Research, uh, the R20. Uh, R1, I, I would imagine. Um, the purpose uh, would be to support any research activities required to advance candidate therapeutic to IND, ID, or 510K, whichever you're relevant for, for, for the FDA, and get them ready for clinical testing for neurological disorders. Uh, these projects, if they're successful, uh, they should lead to another project that will include all remaining activities for submission to the FDA. So we, once again, we are looking at, sorry, this, this isn't R21, we are looking at earlier type of award, just the funding is, is, is incorrect in the slide, please excuse that. It is still the 275 uh, over the two year period. Um, only preclinical, notice this is important, only preclinical development activities for therapeutic drugs and devi devices and biologics, okay, no, no clinical of course. And notice the last bullet, no diagnostics or rehabilitation strategies, as well as clinical research, basic research and studies of disease mechanism. None of these are allowed, or these are not allowed. Next deadline, October 16th. Uh, next would be the NINDS Cooperative Program in Translational Research, uh, October 5th deadline. They do say there is no cap on the, on the budget, and I did touch upon that earlier. Um, I, if you are seeking awards over $500,000, please go ahead and, and contact the program officer and, and obtain that approval. Uh, the idea would be to support preclinical development and testing of new therapies for neurological disorders. So once again, quite wide. Um, facilitate therapy-directed projects to accelerate the translation, uh, notice the translation, of basic research discoveries into therapeutic candidates for clinical testing. So um, once again, this is a translational program. Projects should include therapeutic leads, strong biological rationale for the intended approach, and where available in vivo proof of concept of efficacy would be fantastic. Uh, projects, they have to be sufficiently advanced, so when you uh, do um, complete the project, you can go ahead and submit an IND, ID, or 510K to the FDA. Uh, the program can also support what's called a phase zero uh, clinical uh, uh, trial for small molecule drugs. It could do proof of concept for biologics or proof of concept for pilot clinical trials for therapeutic devices. Uh, next, the NINDS Exploratory Clinical Trials for Small Businesses. So this is only for small businesses. Um, to be eligible, uh, you need to, uh, um, well, yeah, there's eligibility criteria. Please go ahead uh, and, and check the, at the SBR website or rather the NIH SBR um, page and, and go see if you are relevant or, or eligible. Um, standard SBR in terms of the dollar value, oh, excuse me, it's a lower one actually. For phase one, it's uh, 100K. No, this would be the STTR, I believe. 100K over two years, and phase two, 750 over three years. 
Uh, the scope would be to provide a vehicle for small businesses uh, submitting SBR grant applications for notice investigator initiated exploratory clinical trials to the NINDS. The trials must focus on products related to the mission and goals of NINDS and may evaluate drugs, biologics, devices, diagnostics, as well as surgical, behavioral, or rehabilitation therapies. Only phase two and fast track applications are supported under this program. You cannot, I repeat, you cannot submit a phase one application. A phase one application will only be accepted as part of a fast track. Fast track is phase one and phase two together. Uh, it is, there is a bit of an art to submitting a fast track application and we will discuss that in our SBIR webinar in a couple of weeks. Uh, this program, the SBIR, uh, does have an STTR counterpart. Uh, notice that under the STTR, 40% has to be conducted by the small business concern, and at least 35% by the academic. Uh, the next deadline would be the December 5th deadline, uh, 2013. Next, uh, exploratory clinical trials from the NINDS and R01. So if we're already, uh, we noticed we did cover uh, early preclinical, we covered uh, translational, and now we're up to the clinic. Um, this uh, R01 is not capped, once again, should uh, uh, request uh, approval for over half a million dollars. We're looking at investigator-initiated exploratory clinical trials. The trial must address research questions related to the mission and goals of NINDS. We did cover that earlier in the presentation, uh, so go ahead and, and, and make sure that you are covered. And may evaluate, once again, drugs, biologics, devices, or surgical, uh, behavioral, or rehabilitative therapies. What they, are, what they do allow is first in human. First in human, phase one, uh, phase two, uh, single site, uh, or phase two single site, or phase two multi-site um, clinical trials. Early studies, safety, tolerability, tos uh, dosing, uh, and later stage, more randomization and blinding, and should yield data that allow a clear go-no-go -no -go decision. This is important uh, regarding whether your intervention should proceed to an efficacy trial. Next due date would be October 5th. Here's a fantastic award uh, that uh, anyone in the Phase 3 area should be definitely aware of. Uh, this is the NINDS Phase 3 Investigator Initiated Efficacy Clinical Trials. This is a cooperative agreement. I will explain what that means uh, momentarily. Once again, there is no cap in the budget and of course it must reflect the scope of the work. In terms of scope, we are looking at uh, multi-site, randomized, controlled phase three clinical trials related once again to the mission of the NINDS. A phase three trial is conducted to provide a definitive answer regarding the safety and efficacy of an intervention or to compare the effective effectiveness of two or more interventions. What is a cooperative agreement? Uh, the idea would be a, a support mechanism used when there will be a substantial federal scientific or programmatic involvement. Substantial involvement means that after award, and actually before award as well, NIH scientific or program staff will assist, guide, coordinate, or participate in project activities. To mean there is a lot of hands-on within the uh, U01, uh, within the U mechanism, U01, uh, it is expected that the uh, uh, NIH staff will be uh, involved in the project. Uh, you will have to consult with them. There will be uh, periodic uh, meetings, be either face-to-face -face or over the phone, and, and they'll, they'll be, once again, uh, de deeply involved. Um, it's a great way to, to ensure that you're on track, and, and we, we would highly recommend uh, going the uh, uh, cooperative agreement way. Here's another program. Uh, it's also it's at several uh, uh, institutes participating, uh, among them uh, uh, NIAID as well. I think I, I presented this um, during the biodefense webinar. These are countermeasures against chemical threats. So uh, the idea would be to develop new and improved therapeutics for chemical threats used in terror attacks or accidentally released from industrial production, storage, or shipping. Uh, research to be supported uh, includes target and candidate identification and characterization through candidate optimization and demonstration of in vivo efficacy through IND submission when appropriate. Um, each project, and once again this is quite vital, uh, each project must include milestones that create discrete go, no, go or no-go decision points in a progressive translational study plan. This is actually, uh, we see this a lot with the cooperative agreements. They do, see, they do like to see uh, these milestones uh, included, uh, once again, with the go-no-go no, go criteria to ensure that uh, you can transition to the next step. Go-no-go no, go to mean that you also should have uh, contingency plans in place. 
if you aren't able to uh, uh, meet uh, those milestones. Notice that the next submission is September 16th, and it is an annual effort here. Uh, funding, they anticipate to award one and a half to two and a half million dollars over five years. And uh, NINDS does participate. Here is essentially the, uh, the same program, uh, just an R21 type award. Um, we're looking at up to total, but not a standard R21, up to a total direct cost limitation of $500,000 for the combined two-year award period. Uh, we're looking at exploratory, developmental, translational research on therapeutics for reducing mortality and morbidity caused by acute exposure to chemical agents. Chemical threats include chemical warfare, uh, such as nerve agents, uh, sarin, VX, toxic industrial chemical, and toxic agricultural chemicals. Um, due date, also non-standard, January 30th, uh, if relevant, um, start uh, preparing it. <laughs> Uh, moving over to more uh, distinct uh, opportunities in a specific space, here is an Alzheimer's disease drug development program. I, I, I do want to share with you that uh, back in January there was a slew of uh, Alzheimer's opportunities that did become available. Some have already closed since then, but then again, we do have two remaining ones that I want to share with you today. Uh, I would definitely stay tuned towards uh, January to see if these, the other ones will be reissued. So the one I'd like to discuss with you today would be the U01, the Alzheimer's Disease Drug Development Program. They expect to award between 350k to 1 million direct costs over three to five years. So they're giving more or less guidelines of what, what, what they're expecting to award. The idea would be to support preclinical development of new therapies aimed at modifying the behavioral symptoms in Alzheimer's disease, or perhaps delaying the onset of, or slowing the progression of Alzheimer's disease mild cognitive impairment or age-related cognitive decline. Specifically, optimization of therapeutic leads with demonstrated activity is what they're looking for. Uh, this is a milestone-driven cooperative agreement program involving participation of the NIA staff, similar to what we discussed earlier, both in the development of the project plan, so they're quite uh, hands-on when you are uh, proposing the uh, application, and monitoring of the research pro uh, progress. Next deadline would be October 5th. Another opportunity from the Alzheimer's space, Alzheimer's disease pilot clinical trials. These are clinical trials, half a million uh, per year for up to five years. Uh, the scope, uh, by the way, the last due date would be October 5th. I do hope they will be reissued, uh, but then again, you can never know. So if relevant, go ahead and submit for October 5th. These are pilot clinical trials. Uh, they are using pharmac pharmacologic and or behavioral interventions directed toward the prevention and treatment of the cognitive and behavioral symptoms of mild cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's disease, and age-related cognitive decline. Another specific one I wanted to share with you, and we only have two more specific ones. One would be the autism, one would be migraine. So this research on autism spectrum disorders, it's an R01, a standard uh, R01 uh, at that. Um, participating institutes, um, uh, mental health, child health, and NDS. Um, this opportunity essentially encourages research grant applications to support research design to elucidate the etiology, epidemiology, diagnosis, treatment, and optimal means of service delivery in relation to autism spectrum disorders. Uh, it could cover basic, clinical, and applied studies. And I would definitely go online to the solicitation to see what are the specific areas of interest and to see if what you are proposing is covered under these areas of interest. Even if they're not covered and you feel like you do have a proper solution for or, or, or if you're addressing an unmet medical need in the autism space, what I would do is definitely contact the program officer and try to get some feedback. Perhaps they'll tell you that uh, you should go ahead and submit after all and uh, uh, maybe you do have a chance of winning. The R21 counterpart is uh, once again the research on autism spectrum disorders. It's more early exploratory and it's your standard 275 direct cost over a two year period. Another specific one, the neurobiology of migraine. It's an R01, standard R01 at that. It does expire in September. <clears throat> and we are anticipating that it will be reissued, although once again, one can never know. Uh, stay tuned. Um, it does encourage R01 grant applications from institutes or organizations that intend to perform innovative research that will expand our current knowledge of neurobiological mechanisms, underlying migraine, headache, examine the role of neuromodulators, genetic and environmental influences in migraine susceptibility, and explore new targets for therapy development. 
Um, if you're a little earlier in the process in your uh, stage of development, go ahead and, and try to work through the R21 uh, <clears throat> mechanism. That would be the neurobiology of migraine R21, standard uh, uh, set of uh, data at that. Um, I do want to uh, just give you another example from the uh, Mental Health Institute. It's just a very interesting program. That's why I chose to share it with you. Uh, it's a two-phase program, a two-stage program. It's Translational Research for Development of Novel Interventions for Mental Disorders. It's an R21, R33 type mechanism to mean you do go ahead and submit the two of them together, both the R21 and the R33. However, you'd only transition to the R33 upon successful completion of the R21. The R21 does allow for $325,000 total over two years, so it's a non-standard R21. And the R33 allows for $525K per year for up to three years. In terms of the scope, uh, it's an exploratory developmental phased innovation, so R21, R33. An idea would be to speed the translation of emerging findings on, <clears throat> on the neuroscience of mental disorders into novel intervention approaches that will ultimately reduce symptoms and or restore function. So, as I mentioned, it provides support for up to two years for the R21 phase, for preliminary proof of principle studies in human participants, followed by up to three years of support for the R33 uh, phase. For pilot studies, notice pilot studies to assess the implementation of the intervention and evaluate the feasibility of conducting a larger trial to assess the efficacy of the intervention. Those were the opportunities that I want to share with you from the NIH. Uh, notice that there are um, many specifics. There are, more, there are some more broad ones, such as the uh, drug discovery from NINDS. There's the omnibus solicitations. So there are plenty of, uh, plenty of opportunities that I didn't share with you due to the limited time. But then again, you always go onto the NIH website uh, and search for your keyword and, and try to see where uh, if there's an opportunity relevant to you. In terms of private foundations, uh, I want to share with you the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson Research. Their scope, uh, the MJFF, uh, they do put a strong emphasis on funding translational and clinical research. Nevertheless, the fund also supports high-risk, high-reward discovery work to help keep new ideas flowing into the drug development pipeline. I will show you two uh, opportunities. One will be the Rapid Response Innovation Award. It is open year-round. We're looking at a $75,000 award. Um, great award. Not enormous, but then again, the time to money is very quick. It's a fast response. And it, once again, it is open year-round. Uh, they're looking for early exploratory, high-risk, high-reward, little to no preliminary data needed, uh, but with potential to significantly impact the understanding of, the, of Parkinson's disease. Uh, looking for new targets or pathways that may ultimately feed the early drug development pipeline for treatment of Parkinson's disease. The second one will be the Therapeutic Pipeline Program. Uh, the Therapeutic Pipeline Program supports Parkinson's disease therapeutic development along the entire preclinical and clinical path. In terms of funding, there is no set budget limit uh, up to two years of funding for preclinical development or up to three years of funding for clinical development, and they don't allow for more than 10% uh, for the for-profit institutes uh, for indirect costs. That's just thought you'd be interested to know that. In terms of deadline for application, pre-proposals, notice October 30th, uh, just around the corner, full proposal invitations, uh, November 20th, and full proposals uh, January 15th would be submitted. Uh, notice the asterisk on the bottom left. There is an informational conference call. You can uh, join on September 18th and ask uh, or, or listen in and ask questions, and uh, uh, hopefully it will be relevant to you. Uh, the second uh, uh, nonprofit I want to share with you would be the Fast Forward Foundation for MS, the multiple oh, multiple sclerosis. Um, notice that the 2012 RFP cycle for the general fund is closed, uh, and we do anticipate that funding opportunities will be published uh, shortly. Uh, in terms of the general fund, uh, funding available for neuroprotection and neurodegeneration in NMS, uh, they're looking to invite proposals for commercial organizations to establish research partnerships with Fast Forward to accelerate and support development of therapeutic strategies for protecting the nervous system from damage and ways to repair the nervous system to restore function. Uh, the second one would be the Collaborative Fund, Accelerating Commercial Development Fund, number one. Uh, provides funding of opportunities of up to half a million dollars total, uh, so including direct and indirect. Uh, the, it, the idea would be to commercial, uh, it is designed for commercial entities for the development of MS treatments. Um, <clears throat> accelerating, uh, the second one would be Accelerating Innovation Fund, provides funding opportunities up to, <coughs> excuse me, $250,000 per year. 
total for university-based or seed stage organizations. <coughs> Terribly sorry. I do want to take a moment to discuss with you <clears throat> the NH review process. <clears throat> From the moment you submit, about four months later, you should be receiving a review. And you are judged for five main parameters. <clears throat> They're looking at your um, significance of public health, your innovative factor, <clears throat> your leadership, the environment, can it support the work that you propose, and ultimately they're looking at your scientific approach. They're trying to weigh your strengths against the risk of providing you the money. So first off, you have to make sure that you are responsive to the solicitation. I showed you a number of, of specific solicitations <clears throat> that uh, if you're not responsive for, you're not going to get funded for sure. So that's the first thing you have to uh, establish, and that's probably the easiest part. The more uh, <clears throat> uh, problematic aspect of an application would be the competitiveness of it. Uh, how are you scoring all of these five parameters? And what I can share with you, uh, ultimately, that one, what wins awards is a top quality scientific approach. Great science wins. But then again, great science without the surrounding uh, leadership, innovation, environment, and significance may not necessarily win, as the reviewers could scrutinize you for perhaps leadership does not have the experience or expertise, perhaps the, the environment cannot support such work, <clears throat> and uh, vice versa as well. So. Great uh, parameters all around with a uh, poor research uh, approach will not get funded for sure. So yes, to win an application, you have to be strong in all five points and make sure that all of these outweigh the risk of providing you the money. I would like to take a few minutes to discuss <clears throat> more of a broad way, uh, in, a, in a broad way, how to maximize your efforts and your chances. I will <clears throat> ultimately discuss how uh, FreeMind goes ahead and does that. You can try to implement that uh, at home as well. Um, first of all, you have to know the interest of the granting agency. I shared with you the interest of the NINDS, but if you are uh, in a different uh, area, you can go ahead and, and online and check what the interests are of the uh, Mental Health Institute, Child Health, uh, Aging. You can talk to program officers, try to get their feedback regarding their interests. Uh, they are happy to speak. Uh, just go ahead and, and, and contact them. Um, definitely focus your project application. Keep in mind the NIH. Uh, doesn't fund labs or doesn't fund companies, it funds projects with a discrete start point and end point. They need to understand what you're trying to achieve with their uh, funding. Uh, it, cannot, it cannot be overly ambitious, uh, otherwise they will not, uh, the risk would go up for the, uh, for the reviewers and they would not like to award you due to the uh, <clears throat> inherent risk that you added to the application. So keep your projects focused. Once again, start point, end point, clear milestones, clear specific aims. <coughs> Ask for as necessary. Uh, don't inflate the budget. Uh, if you do want ha over half a million, contact the program officer. Uh, don't ask for too less, otherwise they will think you do not know what you are doing. Um, definitely present a complete project. Um, you could leverage on research collaborations. If, you're, if there are gaps in your capabilities, uh, you can uh, bring in consultants, subcontractors, um, any elements in your application that you feel you're not strong enough or would need ex outside expertise, definitely you should bring those on. Um, the, you know, receiving a, a review from a, a reviewer that says that uh, you don't do not have the proficiency to carry out a certain set of scientific activities is discouraging because most likely there is someone that can. So definitely uh, make sure that's covered when you do submit the application. Um, statistician, for example, uh, if you're going for a clinical trial. Uh, definitely target the right mechanism. I showed you different pockets of money, different sizes of rewards, different uh, <clears throat> different scope of work. If it's exploratory, if it's if it's more advanced, if it's translation, if it's clinical, there are different uh, <clears throat> programs that you can be targeting. And definitely uh, uh, make sure you are targeting the, the correct one for your science for your for your project. <clears throat> I showed you the omnibus solicitations that you could be using, and that brings me to uh, the last bullet point, which would be to conduct a thorough strategic assessment. What does that mean? That means understand your projects. How do you uh, make them into a, 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 well, a fundable project in terms of scope of work? <clears throat> you don't be overly ambitious, yet you know, provide some substance in these, in these programs. Um, and, and then go ahead and link those with, uh, with the available pockets of money. And I'll, I'll share with you momentarily how we go about doing that. In terms of our team, we're looking at 35 employees. smaller group of analysts uh, that un undertake the uh, analysis or strategy end of, uh, of it, uh, taking the client um, through uh, or generating for the client a multi-submission granting strategy. 
<clears throat> a larger group of managers and writers that see uh, the client through to submission of the project, and I'll explain how momentarily. In terms of our leaders, uh, Guy Harshan would be the um, manager of the professional department, um, primarily the analyst uh, department. <clears throat> and then we've got uh, Dr. Murav Geva, Dr. Sigal Katz, and Dr. Inap Kordzowski, who are the uh, senior analysts of the team and uh, do most of the analysis in-house. Um, fantastic, uh, fantastic individuals. And last but not least, uh, Joel Knopf would be the manager of the consulting services uh, overseeing the uh, writing effort. <clears throat> Just to take you very quickly through how Freemind goes about uh, um, doing what we do and how we maximize uh, the client's efforts, um, so really two core services. Uh, the first core service would be the strategic consulting, so uh, outlining a granting strategy, a long-term granting strategy. The way we do this is our analysts would uh, look at your pipeline, understand the various R&D tasks at hand, what sort of work you're looking to fund, um, <clears throat> what stages develop, and what sort of data you have, and they'll uh, then link those R&D tasks with available pockets of money. For example, if you'd like to cover tasks 1, 2, and 3, that could be in R21, whereas if you add tasks 4, 5, and 6, uh, that could potentially, uh, provided you have the correct preliminary data, that could potentially be an R1, or perhaps a fast-track application for SBIR, or maybe just a Phase 1 SBIR. Uh, the idea would be to uh, ultimately uh, generate a list of available funding opportunities. It, it could be solicited opportunities that I shared many of them with you today, or it could be strategizing as to an unsolicited opportunity, perhaps the omnibus solicitations, <clears throat> seeing how we could best go, how, go about in presenting uh, a handsome project to a, a certain granting agency, be it NINDS, mental health, aging, etc. Um, the initial list is then translated into a granting strategy. Uh, for example, come October we'll submit uh, an application, February an, a couple of applications, perhaps a pre-application to, uh, to Michael J. Fox Foundation and so on and so forth. And then this activity is an ongoing activity, it doesn't actually end. Any of you who uh, receive notifications from the NIH, you can see that every Friday we send out a list of new opportunities and uh, many of them or some of them could be relevant to you. Uh, definitely many of them are relevant to our clients and, and if anything comes out, uh, we will notify them immediately. Uh, that's in terms of the strategy. The second course service would be <clears throat> the grant production process undertaken by our project managers. Uh, they <clears throat> essentially start by uh, generating comprehensive templates for the clients. Uh, it's based on uh, the solicitation guidelines, based on 14 years of experience and expertise and successful applications and also based on any information that the client is able to send prior. Uh, we plug that information in into the relevant area, send the template to the client, and from here on it is an ongoing feedback type process uh, where we <clears throat> insert our edits, comments, uh, rewrite sections. Uh, of course, the client has to uh, insert the, uh, rele the relevant scientific information, and we go ahead and, and, and package it as neatly as possible, all the while uh, providing our ongoing feedback, comments, and edits. Uh, we look at the budgets, we make sure they are in line with um, the budgetary limitations, they're correctly constructed. Of course, we <coughs> bring all the information together, package it neatly, do all the uh, bits and pieces of the editing and, and the application package. And the uh, final outcome, or what we're trying to ultimately achieve, <coughs> would be a single, coherent, scientifically sound application ready to be submitted, where we typically go ahead and submit. Just to summarize that uh, graphically for you, if you look at the client realm, the client realm uh, on the top left, have uh, the client has their R&D funding needs. We then take those R&D needs and, and generate a multi-submission granting strategy, perhaps even over a 24-month period, uh, using the analyst's uh, in, uh, set of expertise. <clears throat> then the, uh, we take a more sh slightly shorter-term granting strategy, next two deadlines, for example. <coughs> Excuse me, <clears throat> and then go ahead with the project managers uh, executing on that granting strategy. Of course, there is a review, there's a lag time, uh, up to 10 months usually, and then uh, award. And this keeps on going. Uh, we update the granting strategy, we uh, uh, submit more applications, uh, and uh, all the while maximizing the client's efforts in the space and making sure that they're uh, definitely uh, tuned into the funding landscape and they're uh, submitting um, the most relevant and top quality applications possible. That essentially was the uh, uh, webinar on uh, neurological disorders, uh, CNS, PNS. 
Uh, you're welcome to contact me. You're welcome to go online uh, to our YouTube channel, Free My Group LLC, uh, or our, you can follow us on Twitter if you like to. Uh, we tweet uh, mostly funding opportunities that come out and uh, some interesting other other interesting stuff, webinars, presentations, uh, and so on. Uh, you can do that. And um, you, once again, you can also contact me directly. And at this time, I will be trying to answer some questions. And uh, I'll start from the top. I see quite a few. Okay. Um, great. So there, there was a question, I believe a question, on TBI, uh, traumatic brain injury. So um, many of the stuff I, I mentioned is relevant. But then again, there is a specific, op well, two specific opportunities that I did not uh, present here today, which I think you should, anyone in the TBI space should be aware of. Both of them are DOD related. <clears throat> One stems from the CDMRPs, the Congressionally Directed Medical Research Programs. That has actually, the date has passed. That's why I did not present it. Uh, just recently closed. Uh, they are issued annually, and typically TBI is one of the uh, programs. Just go online, cdmrp.org, and uh, wait for the next one. Usually they come out around February, March, <clears throat> and there are some great programs for TBI. Um, and then the second one would be the uh, U.S. Army, USAMRIC uh, BA 13-1. Uh, you can write that down. <clears throat> Very easy to find online. Uh, they cover TBI as well. So anyone in the TBI space, another two fantastic opportunities. Okay. Right. So I was just asked about, uh, uh, yes, great. Um, and yes, the slides, uh, I've been asked about the slides. Once again, it will be available online. I will also um, email you uh, thank you for joining the webinar today. And the slides will be attached to that email as well. Um, actually, the email will contain the uh, presentation, the recording, whereas the uh, slides will be uh, sent to you in a follow-up email. Um, Okay, in terms of finding the solicitations, uh, yes, grants.gov is, is a good place to look, although not the best, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not so slick, if you will. Uh, what I would do is definitely go to the uh, NIH website, and just type in NIH funding opportunities in Google, and, and you'll go directly to the, the correct place. Uh, you can find the omnibus solicitations there, you can find all of the open solicitations, you can search by institute, you can search by keywords. Uh, very, very easy to find. <clears throat> okay, and I'm getting some thank yous. Uh, happy to oblige. And um, I think that is mostly it. Any, if anybody wants to uh, discuss in a little more detail uh, regarding specific opportunities relevant to your science, go ahead and email me or uh, <clears throat> you can uh, call directly as well. And uh, always happy to, to oblige. Uh, next week, uh, looks like we're going to go with the uh, uh, medical devices webinar. So a bit of a tricky one, uh, honestly, uh, since uh, there are so many different areas uh, covering uh, medical device. Uh, so um, a very, very interesting webinar, and I hope to see you there as well. Once again, thank you very much for logging on, and I appreciate, uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye.